Hey guys, this is Chandan and today we'll discuss about Helm charts. So we'll discuss about charts and templates and we'll create the charts locally and then we'll try to install and upgrade those charts. So we'll kind of do hands-on on Helm charts. So basic agenda is to install Helm locally and then create a new chart, install it and then the chart will have certain templates. We'll look into those templates. Then we'll try to pull some charts from the repository and then we'll install those charts. We'll try to upgrade those charts and then we'll try to create releases and rollbacks. So basic prerequisite is we should have a Kubernetes cluster for this. So I already have a EKS cluster ready. I have created that in previous video. So you can look into that and then we need to decide on what security configuration we need to apply for the installation. So if we have any, we can apply that and then we can proceed with the Helm install and configuring Helm. So there are three basic concepts that we need to understand if you're working with Helm. So first thing we need to understand about the charts, then repository and the releases. So chart is something that contains a collection of templates. So it contains Kubernetes templates, kind of collection of YAML files. That's mainly for building Kubernetes resources. And then we are installing those charts in Kubernetes cluster. So whenever we are installing that, it creates release every time. So that, that's where release is important. And somewhere we are storing the charts in the repositories or we are kind of pulling the charts from the repository. So we have Helm repositories. So we can say like how it works, Helm install charts into Kubernetes, creating a new release for each installation. And to find new charts, we can search Helm chart repositories. So these are the basic commands of Helm. So for installing Helm or repo related actions, or if you want to see the charts, or if you want to uninstall it or roll back it or upgrade it. So there are many commands of Helm. First, we need to install Helm to run these commands. So we'll go to the terminal and uh, we'll simply write Helm. So it's saying command not found. That means Helm is not installed. So let's install it. We can install simply by referring the document. So we have helm.sh page and there we can see it's official documentation by Helm and uh, you will find all the related information on installation or best practices, chart related uh, actions that we can do. So basically we need to install the Helm first. So if you go down, we can see we have certain commands for the different different operating systems. So if, if you are using Mac, Windows or Linux based on that, we have certain commands. So we are using Mac. So we just need to run this command. Let's go to the terminal. This will download the Helm locally and then it will install it. Seems like it's installed. So let's verify using Helm version command. Yeah, we can see the version. So that's good. Now we have Helm ready. So we can run the Helm commands. So we'll go to the VS code and we'll try to create a new Helm chart. So we are here and we can see we only have readme file in our VS code. So we can create a new chart using Helm create command. So we just need to write Helm create then we need to give a name of the chart so let's name it demo just saying creating demo we can see it has added one folder demo if you open this folder so we have some subfolders charts templates and few files so mainly this charts folder will be used if you want to store sub charts so we can store here and if you open the templates folder so we have tests that's for testing purpose and we have some YAML files like deployment.yaml, HPA, ingress, service, service account. So these are mainly Kubernetes related YAML files. If you open any of the files, we can see it's the same manifest file. The only difference you can notice here is we are not hard coding the values. We are using certain templates to pass those values. So mainly Helm is using this template to evaluate the value first, and then it's assigning that value to those fields. So that's how we are not hard coding the values and we are using you know, helpers.tpl or values.yaml or some other files to provide the values to those templates or manifest files. So we can see here in values.yaml also, we can provide all the different kind of values. We can write the values that we want to pass to the YAML files. So we can create all those values here. And within the YAML file, we are using a syntax dot values dot replica console. Let's go to the value and check for this particular value. So what's the value of this? So that, that's how we can define the value in values file. And later on, we can use within the YAML files just by using this syntax like dot values dot replica and, and we can use nested value also. So let's say if a replica account is also having some nested fields, so we can use replica account dot that particular field and then we can pass that value here. So we can see here we have certain nested values like image has repository. So image dot repository we can use or we can directly use image pull secrets or 
anything we, we want to use so we, we just simply need to define dot values dot replica count or dot values dot uh, image pool secrets or dot values dot image dot pool policy so that's how we can supply the values to these manifest files and we have also one way you know we can include the value from the templates also so we can define those templates let's say this is not using the value directly from the value file so this is using from the template file so we can see we have a include function to define to include that template within this manifest and that that particular template we are defining within the helper.tpl so if you go inside this so we have certain blocks that defines that particular template so by using this define and end keyword we are kind of defining this particular template and we are providing that body of the template and then later on we are using using the include keyword so that's how we can define templates we can include that template within the manifest also we have some other functions like if for conditional statements and then we have some range function for iteration we have with for deciding the scope so there are many other functions that we can use within the yaml file within these manifest file to provide those values so that's important so let's say you are having four or five environments for your project so the same chart can be used for all different environments just we need to create multiple values file like we are not repeating this chart again and again for different environment we are keeping the chart same and then we are creating multiple values file like values dev values test values prod those kind of files we can create multiple files and while running the helm install command we need to decide like which particular environment we want to deploy and then we'll select that particular values file during that helm install command so that's how we can work with the helm just create the chart you know define the template and then create multiple values file for multiple environments also we have dot helm ignore file if you want to ignore some files we can add it here it's similar to git ignore we have chart.yml that contains information about the chart a kind of description then chart version application version so whenever we are modifying the chart so we can increment that particular version or if you have any you know modification in the application so we can increment that version in the chart.yml we have notes.txt so that's mainly contains information about the, that particular chart so while running that chart or installing that chart this information will be shown to the user and then we have underscore helpers.tpl that we already know like it's including certain templates files this will be used internally by helm rendering engine to provide those values to these particular different yaml files so we have understood basic structure of helm chart different files and folders we can run simply helm template and then we can just give the name of the chart so we can see now we have generated the manifest file so what helm does it has provided all the values that we are passing in different values file so it has just provided that value and it has it has replaced those templates double braces syntax with that value it has created a manifest file also we have some other commands related to lint like helm lint just for validation we need to define the name of the chart yeah so it looks good so now we have just validated it so now we want to run this chart and we want to deploy the kubernetes components so basically we can run helm install and then we can give the name of the chart and it's the first time so i'll just say just generate a name for release yeah seems like it has deployed it has created a new release name it has deployed to default namespace with the revision one and status is deployed so this looks good now we can validate it within our kubernetes cluster so let's go to kubernetes cluster so we have aks cluster ready and we can see yeah we have created a demo deployment one minute ago and we can also check the pods so yeah we have one pod running so that's good we have successfully deployed our kubernetes resource to aks cluster and let's say we want to make some changes so we want to just increase the replica so again the same values file will use to modify the value so currently it has it is having one replica let's increase the replica to three i'll just save it and i just need to run upgrade command because this time we have already installed the particular chart and now we want to just upgrade the release so we can simply use helm upgrade command we can give the release name so really this is the release name 
and then we need to give the chart name yeah so it's done and we can see the revision is 2 so that's good we have created a new revision for that and we can go to the kubernetes cluster again what's the current status here so yeah we can see now we have three pods running so that's good we have just created new pods 25 seconds ago because we increased the replica count when we'll refresh here we can see now we have three pods running in this deployment so that's good we can see how quickly we can install a chart and again update that chart quickly by just modifying the value and by running the helm upgrade command so now we'll kind of list the release using helm list command so let's run helm list minus a to see all the releases yeah and we can see we have one release that's demo having two revision so that's good we are able to list the release so let's say if you want to roll back the changes we thought you know three is not a right number the previous number one was correct so let's roll back the changes to the previous version so we can simply use helm rollback command to roll back to a particular version so we just need to write helm rollback and then we need to give the release name so let's get the release name and then we need to give the revision number so we want to roll it back from number 2 to number 1 yeah saying rollback was success so now we'll again go to the AKS cluster we'll just refresh it and we can see now we have count as 1 we can also check the pods so we should have one pod running yeah that's good one pod is running so and that was created 5 minutes ago so we can we can see how quickly we can roll back the change with the same release just by providing a revision number so that's how if we are deploying anything we we thought you know it's not working perfectly so we can just roll it back to the any other version we can use the helm rollback command to do that so now we have created a chart by ourselves we have just created a new revision of that particular release and then we have rolled back to the previous version now we'll see how can we use the existing chart so there is a repository where you can find all the different charts for different different type of resources so how can we get those charts how can we install those charts and how can we edit make some edits in that particular values file and deploy it so we'll now kind of try to get a new chart so we'll go to the repository we have artifacthub.io here you can find all the charts so you just need to search that particular resource so let's search for let's say nginx so we have nginx provided by bitnami so let's click here and you can see the description page so mainly it's showing the description about this particular package like this is open source web server you know some introduction then installation uninstallation related information some parameters some basic details about that and at the right side we have option of install templates default values etc so let's click on this install and we can see we have this these command listed so we need to add the repository first and then we'll, we need to install that chart it will perform this action uh, let's first check into templates so we can see here we have similar template files like deployment yaml and some additional files like health ingress then we have hpa ingress prometheus related service monitor svc so this is showing like this particular chart is having these many templates and this is having this default values so this is also having the default values list so we can close it and now we can install it so we will click on install and then we'll from the first action we need to add a repository so we can simply add that repository locally by running the this particular command helm repo add and then name of the repo and then url so let's run it so it's saying it's, it's already exist uh, with this configuration so probably i have in my local so we'll use the same repo we can simply run helm search repo command to search that repo just to validate whether we have that saying it already exists yeah we can see we have this bitnami repo and we have so many different type of resources like sonar cube redis and somewhere we should have nginx also yeah we can see we have nginx so that's good we already have that 
so now we have that particular repo here so simply we'll run the next helm install command to install it yeah it looks good seems like this has installed yeah it's saying deployed it has created a new release my nginx whatever name we have provided it has created that release and then we can see it has deployed this to default namespace and revision is one so that's good so now we can go to the aks cluster again and we can just refresh it yeah we can see my nginx just 52 seconds ago inside default namespace that's good let's click on pods here also we can see we have my nginx running one minute ago so we are able to successfully deploy it if you have kubectl installed locally and if you already have a kube config and credentials locally so then we can directly run kubectl from our cli to connect to the kubernetes cluster so we can run kubectl get pods minus a to list all the pods yeah and we can see we have my nginx running 97 seconds ago and then also we have demo running that was 10 minutes ago so that's good also we can list the services and we'll just list only in the default namespace because we have installed to default namespace yeah so we can see we have demo and my nginx services running and everything has cluster ip that's internal my nginx we just installed so this is having external ip so we can access it in the web browser let's go to the web browser let's provide the ip and we can see we have nginx running so that's good we have just seen we have successfully deployed nginx now let's go back to the vs code and let's try to fetch that particular code so we have just added a repository of my nginx then we ran the helm install to install it now let's say if you want to do some changes in the values file but we don't have that code in our local so we need to pull that code first in our local and then we can edit that particular values file let's say if you want to increase the replica count and later on we want to again upgrade the same release so how can we do that so let's let's do that operation so we can simply run helm pull command to pull that particular repo so it's bitnami nginx Yeah, and we can see it has pulled a file and we need to extract it so let's run tar minus xvzf and then name yeah so we have extracted all the files and we can see we have nginx folder here that also contains a similar structure so this chart we have created by helm create and this chart we just pulled and it, it's also same but kind of some additional files because it's already there in the repository and we have the same template files and having some more yaml files and somewhere we have values.yaml file so now we can see this value is also similar value you know with the default values if you want to change something so let's say we want to change the replica count and currently if we go to our aks cluster we can see currently we can see only one nginx pod is running inside this deployment so let's increase the replica to six i want six pod to run and we want to deploy to the same release so let's just check the release so the release name is my nginx right so let's just copy this and let's run the helm upgrade command because we have already installed it helm upgrade then release name and then chart name so that's nginx so this should also create a revision too with the new updated replica count yes it has deployed and now revision is 2 and now we can validate it again going back to the aks cluster let's refresh it and we can see yes we have now 
six pods running. So let's click on the pods to validate it. Yeah, we can see we have six pods running started 26 seconds ago. So one pod was already running. It has added five more pods to match the replica count. So that's how we have successfully deployed a new revision of our release. And we have kind of edited that code in local. We have added a new replica count and then we have deployed to the same release. So it's very easy. Let's say you want to add some more charts. If you want to do some more deployments, if you want a new component, new Kubernetes component for your project. So simply, you know, you can also refer, you can go to the artifact hub IO and here we can search for the package. So let's say we want to install Grafana. That's a monitoring tool. So this is also available. We can just simply search it here. Also, this has the same similar description page all the information and the same install templates and values and information we can click on install we can add that repo and then we can install that chart so this is also a very quick process i can quickly click on the repo so this this also exists so that's fine if you don't have that repo locally so that will add that repo i just simply run the install Helm repo update mainly it's useful for fetching the latest information of the chart. So let's run it. Helm repo update. And it has just updated it. So now we can run the install. Yeah, so seems like this has deployed now with the new release name Migrafana. Revision is one. We can again go back to the IKS cluster to see the pods. Yeah, and we can see this has just started 26 seconds ago. So that's good. We can check the deployments and we should have the deployment for my Grafana. Yeah, we have that. So similarly, you know, we can install n number of components or Kubernetes related resources using the Helm. So Helm is basically used to manage all your packages. And in this video, we have just seen like how quickly we can create a chart or we can search the chart from the repository and add a chart and then we can quickly install that to the Kubernetes cluster. In the upcoming video, we'll try to add these steps as part of pipeline execution. So we'll add Helm installs and upgrades in the Azure DevOps pipeline. That's an efficient way of doing it. So instead of you know manually running these commands in the CLI, we'll run these commands in the pipeline. So we'll see all those steps in the upcoming videos. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.